Alright, how's it going everyone? Um, I wanted to redo my last tutorial because I feel like it could have been a lot better. Um, so I want to show you how to make a basic scene. We're going to basically do the same thing we did last time. I'm gonna go, we're going to go on the main menu and we're going to click play and we're going to go to the scene creator. Now we're on update 4.3 so so we're going to create a scene, right? Um, You've, you've got all these different options. Endless modes and stuff work pretty well now, so you know you can effectively make arenas. Um, we're gonna do we're gonna do create scene, but I want to talk about this load scene real quick. So these are all levels that I've made, right? Um, ping pong, ding dong is obviously a work in progress. Um, but oh, actually, and except this one, this the guy from the Discord made it. Uh, hanger E1M1 hanger. Um, Anyways, so the way that you add new levels or, um, yeah, adding community maps or such like that, or transferring them over from the old update is, so right here where it says um, app data, local, low, balloon, moose, that's what you want to do is you want to click on the start button um, on, your, on your desktop, click on start, and find your run program, and type percent app data and then percent and you should get a folder if it takes you to roaming you want to go back to the app data folder and you want to click on local low and then balloon moose action maximum action custom and levels and then what you want to do is so each level is actually a dot text file and what you need to do is take that doc dot text file say the name of the map is fear um, ma save dot text you want to make a folder just called fear no ma save anything like that put your fear ma save in your fear folder and that should work it, it should be in your levels it'll be in this file path down here um, so now that that's out of the way let's go and create a new scene um, we'll just call it max like we did in the last video and we'll create the scene. So this time, what we've got is this is your new enemy spawn. He's a little bit higher up than he used to be. That's that's it's whatever. Um, here is these are your gateways for starting the recording. So whenever um, you know, whenever you walk through these, it'll activate the it'll activate the recording, and then once you walk through the red gateway, you'll end the recording and you'll end the level and you'll be able to view the replay. So you also get one floor tile, you know, you start out with this stuff, and uh, we're just, we'll keep it for now, because we'll use it. Um, you can press space to raise things up, but oddly enough, I'm pressing space and it's not letting me do anything. Um, you should be able to press R to lower it into the ground. I'm not gonna do that right now, because if I lower this into the ground, it could, mess up the way that enemies spawn um, and I don't want to do that so we're just gonna keep that there but that's just for reference and you can also press V if you want to rotate objects um, if this video doesn't work well enough for you I've also written a steam guide um, in the maximum action guide section you can see it there and uh, get a you know um, literary reference so um, you press P P will open up this editor menu. You can select you can select between objects, weapons, and characters. Um, it's still pretty limited. They're they're gonna be able to you'll be able to upload your maps to the Steam Workshop soon. Um, they haven't quite implemented that, but I'm sure it's probably coming in the next patch. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, but what we're gonna do is this tile, this um, gray tile that your spawn is over, is the 5x5 five five floor right here. Another one, it's the same thing. It's sand 5x5, five five, and it's basically just a sandy texture instead of a sort of metal texture. Um, so now, what, what you want to do is, whenever you're in this menu and you want to spawn another floor tile or whatever you want to spawn, you'll left-click on it. It'll flash gray like that for a second, and you'll press P to close your editor menu, and every time you left click from that point on, you'll spawn that object. So we'll just make a really basic 3x3, just like we did in the last video. Um, 
just a tiny little little room and even with this much space you'll be able to make something pretty cool um, we'll also we're gonna make cover for the um, for the scene and we'll also build the walls around it so you can see what it's like to place walls um, whenever you're moving objects around as you can see I'm grabbing the center piece these little blue cubes in the center of these tiles they'll be attached to every object but on this object specifically they're attached to the center and you'll right click on them and as soon as you right click it you'll be able to move it around with your mouse and if you want to get rid of it you can um, click your mouse wheel button and that'll delete it so you've got your 3x3 three three room right here that's perfect that's all you'll really need to make an effective room you can even make them smaller than that and still have fun with it. Um, and what we'll do, we're, we're going to make it a full-fledged room, right? So we're going to spawn a door. That is uh, the door 5x3 down here. And we're going to put it right about there. It doesn't perfectly line up with the 5x5 five five floor tiles just yet. I think it's an option that they're planning to implement in the future. But it's just not quite ready yet. Um, and we're going to start, obviously I'm, I'm moving pretty fast right now, I'm, I'm sorry, I hope you can keep up with this, but you um, you just, basically every time you want to select something new, you know, you just press P and you bring up the editor and you click on the object, bang, and then you can start spawning. So you, I'm using V to rotate these all really quickly, I'm just pressing it very quickly, um, and you just grab these blue tiles, these blue cubes, and that'll let you move everything into the place that you want it to be. Walls can be kind of tricky because, see, like, watch once I line it up here, you'll get a little gap. That's fine. I mean, you could place another wall here and, and line it up, and I mean, I'm not going to get precise with it, but you can line it up and kind of cut that space out, but you'll still get, like, a little gap right here, and it, it it's whatever. We'll, we'll leave it like that because, in reality... You know that that's fine um, unless you're really nitpicking that's not that's not a big deal um, so we're just gonna keep we're just gonna place all these down and we're just gonna build the walls around the level first and once we build the walls then we can put cover I mean you can however works for you I tend to I tend to build the actual area first and then um, and then build the cover and stuff within it because I can see, you know, how big the area is, where am I going to have enemies spawn at, um, stuff like that. It, it helps you kind of get a better idea of, you know, what you're going for or uh, what, what may be the best setup, especially when you're working with arenas um, and you have to, when you, when you make arenas, you'll get these four pink um, enemy spawn boxes and you can place them wherever you want to but um, they'll spawn randomly so you have to make sure that wherever you put them creates a good flow no matter where you are in the map or the arena um, those are those are really important desi design decisions when you're making an arena so now after all that, we've, we've already got the, the basic layout of the room, right? We've got our walls, we've got the floor, we've got a door that you can enter in. We're going to spawn this 5x3 wall right here. And that's going to be... I like to use this one because it's got these little lines here. Um, it really helps you know how high it is. Because I like to lower these walls a little bit into the ground. And I think right about here... Yeah, right about here is a good height. You'll be able to walk through this door, and the wall will be shoulder level. So you'll be able to aim your gun, but um, you won't be covered by it. I just lost HDMI connection to my TV, so give me one second. Okay, so now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to rotate the walls with V, and I'm going to sink this one, maybe one block into the ground. We'll keep it right about there. So whenever you're placing these walls and stuff, you want to make sure that there's a gap at least two blocks wide. Um, I've noticed from making my own maps that enemies will like to go around 
gaps that are bigger than two blocks, or smaller than two blocks, sorry. If they're, if they're only one block wide, they'll run around it. Um, so we'll, we're going to make a little kind of offset triangle here. Um, something, something like that. I think that's, that's pretty good. As long as there's a little space right here. Well, actually, we don't, we don't necessarily need the guys to go through here. And I think even with this little bit of the block cut off, they'll still be able to go through it. It might be something more like uh, one and a half blocks wide. So now that we've got, we're gonna, we've got where you're gonna enter. We've got the first little bit of cover, and you know, so just in general. Um, we will spawn the characters now, and we're gonna go with the robbers because they're cool. And I did this in the last video. I just like their outfits. We're gonna put him here because he'll be able to he'll be able to take a beating whenever we open the door. We'll just kick the door in his face, right? A um, little bit of lag there. Let's go. Um, we're gonna spawn him behind the door, or sorry, behind the wall, not the door. And we'll put him there. I'm gonna put a couple, a couple little bad guys here. You want to make it challenging, but um, not fair. You'll definitely be able to expect where they're coming from and react accordingly. So there you go. That that's that's all it is. That's all it goes down to when you're placing your characters. You'll get this little green rectangle, and that um, notes that you're placing characters different. Um, these different sections will change the marker. So when you're placing an object, it'll be a red cube. When you're placing a weapon, um, you'll get a little cube that has a line and the, the image of the pistol, and that'll show you what rotation um, the object is at, the weapon. You can't grab weapons like objects yet, so if you place a weapon down in a way that you don't want it, you have to press X to undo it. Um, and then characters will give you a green rectangle, and that lets you know that each character is two blocks high. So um, what we're going to do is we'll spawn a Mossberg at the starting area, because I like that shotgun. It's a really good shotgun. And so we'll press B, we'll rotate this, and we'll just spawn it on the ground right there. That's totally fine. So whenever you uh, spawn in the level, it'll be right at your feet. And we're also going to place the scene gateways, right? So let's, um, we'll go in here, and we'll go back to our floor, right? And let's get rid of this wall here, right down the middle. That'll be perfect. So once you move through our little, the little scene that we've already just built, you'll, uh, you'll run into this area, excuse me, and you'll activate this scene-ending gateway. And we'll place it right here. I've noticed, um, if you place it right, you know, on the middle right here, it doesn't, um, you, you can still be sort of in this area and trigger the gateway, and that's not good. So I'll place it a little bit farther back here so you have to walk into the room a little bit more before it triggers. And right here, we can just place this right in front of the door because this doesn't quite matter as much. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. I would wall this off normally, but for the sake of the tutorial and time, I'm not going to do that. And at this point, you've basically done it all. You have spawned objects, you've positioned them, placed them down, you've placed your walls, you've placed all of your cover and all of your enemies, you've spawned a weapon, and you've placed your gateways. Um, placing these works just like everything else. You just right-click on it and move these little blue boxes that are within the gateway you know, everything has a little box attached to it, and that's what you right-click to position it. So, now we're ready to test it, right? So before you test something, always be sure to save it. Click Save, and then click Load, and then click Play. And that will guarantee that you don't lose any of the progress that we just started. So I just triggered the recording a little bit early, that's fine, I don't care. Um, but this is it. This is it. You've, you've made the level. You've got a little gap between the door here. You can patch this by taking the, the single bricks. There's test brick one and test brick two that are just 
one block wide, and you can cover these up. That's fine. Um, otherwise, you, you've done it. And uh, let's let's take a quick run through the level. Too, just to show off, you know, the level a little bit, and to, it's always good to be sure you test and make sure that the enemies are spawning where you place them consistently, because every time that you test the level and then you press escape and you want to return to the editor, enemies that you've placed down manually can sometimes change their positions, and in order to reset them, you actually have to go back and place them again and that can be kind of a pain so it's always good to just make sure that do do a, quite a few test runs make sure that the cover is good um it's it's fun to play make sure that all of the enemies are spawning where you want them to be so <laughs> That was pretty good. I missed one of the guys. That's fine. Obviously, you don't have to get every single person. And I'll just do one more for the fun of it. Alright. And that's it. That's basically all you need to know to make a scene. It's quite simple. Um, it probably looks a little bit more intimidating than it actually is, but that's it really is as easy as that. Um, so I thank you for watching. I hope that this tutorial is a little bit better than the last one that I made, um, and I hope that everybody has a good day. So thank you very much for watching.